Good morning. It is uh, 37 degrees Fahrenheit out here right now. Um, August the 23rd, 2023. And uh, the season is changing. We're starting to feel that uh, inevitable feeling of autumn, fall. Well, there's another season that's changed, and that is the season of sin. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, it talks about Moses and how that uh, he chose rather to suffer affliction and suffer with the children of Israel rather than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Uh, it's quite an interesting statement. You see, while it is true that all sin is negative, sin has a degree of pleasure to it. It's a trap. So people get into the thing of sinning. They get into certain things like uh, going out and drinking and whatever else. Well, alcohol makes you feel pretty good for a little while till the hangover comes the next day. Um, you know, other types of things. Eating junk food and whatever else, which I was a major addict to junk food. Well, that sugar and the high fructose corn syrup and the food coloring and the uh, coal tar dyes, in other words, and all the other stuff that they put into sugar or and uh, candy uh, tastes pretty good. But then you get older and and uh, after years of abusing your body with eating junk food, and then you start to realize that uh, you haven't you're starting to have some health problems. <laughs> and um, if you eat enough of it, you can get diabetes and everything. So it's kind of a problem. But uh, that's the thing with sin. There's a pleasure. In sin but it only lasts for a season a lot of people were uh, wearing shorts and t-shirts and whatever else because it was pretty warm and it actually got a little bit hot earlier on this summer and it was up in the 90s which is not very common for uh, northern Maine but um, it's been you know you get, you get some warm days once in a while whatever and the people got a little bit used to the pleasure of being able to dress with very little clothing and uh, but that season is ending well here in America uh, there's been a lot of sin a lot of unrepentant sin people messing around with things and whatever and and now it's time to pay the piper as the old saying goes now it's time to let me be more scriptural it's time to answer to God and uh, a lot of people don't want to do that a lot of people, they're just giving the Lord lip service. They're saying, uh, you know, oh, well, I believe in the good book. I was raised up on the good book. You know, I believe in Jesus, the Son of God. And, you know, I see these country songs coming out, and they're, they're boldly standing against, you know, the corrupt government. Oh, yeah, they're boldly standing, and, and yet they're using profanity. You're, you're singing about the Bible, reading from the Scriptures, and yet you'll use profanity uh, in your speech and it, it blows my mind um, how that's justifiable you know uh, I remember a time when you didn't swear in public you know I'm not that old but I can remember that and if somebody let a cuss word slip it was oh I'm sorry oh, pardon my French I'm sorry about that I shouldn't you know whatever you know and and I remember seeing uh, police officers even calling people down for using profanity in public uh, could you please watch your language? There's uh, women and children present kind of a thing. Um, now, hey, you know, just use as much profanity as you want, you know. Just uh, absolutely insane. And you have professing Christians that defend profanity, which I don't know how that works. But um, that's where we're at right now in this nation. And profanity is just the surface. Uh, of the problems I mean there's a lot more to it than than uh, that um, you know I go into the grocery store and they have 1980s you know rock music or pop music or whatever else and and uh, it's all the those were the boom times you know those were the those were the good old days and whatever no actually those were the days of sin and the 1960s is when a lot of the sin came in 1950s you had the whole rock and roll movement with Elvis and in the 1960s they started 
to bring in the Beatles and the drug culture. By the time you hit the 1970s, it's going into rock and roll. 1980s, it's heavy metal. 1990s, you're getting into a lot of the, you know, well, 80s and 90s, I should say. You're getting into the, some of the really uh, hardcore gangster rap and everything else. And, and uh, the culture of violence starts to grow and people worshiping Satan. I mean, and I, I mean that. You know, the Church of Satan was founded in 1966, but the mainstreaming of it really came in the 1980s and up into the 1990s. And uh, atheism growing by leaps and bounds, more attacks on the Bible, more new versions to cause confusion about what the Bible even is. Uh, I was raised as a new version user in a new version church, so I know what I'm talking about. I was not born and bred in a King James only cult or something like that. Uh, not at all. And, uh, but you know, all of those years, that season of sin and all the pleasure and, uh, you know, sex, drugs, and rock and roll, baby, you know, and all these, let's watch the, these television shows and we'll just push the limits and the movies, you know, it used to be that, uh, I remember growing up as a boy and I'd watch, you know, television, um, and they'd have these, you know, Hollywood movies that, they would put them on television and they bleeped out the profanity. You know, they would they wouldn't play the profanity. So uh just kind of crazy. And I remember the you know the first time that uh um there was a controversy, I I don't remember the year, but they uh somebody let the F word come out, you know, on some television show or something like this, and it was some reality-based thing, I think, if I remember correctly, like where they had prisoners, convicts, you know, talking to youths that were getting in trouble, and they, the one convict used the F word, and it was a, you know, on television, I can't believe it, you know, to use such vile language. Now, go to the grocery store, you'll, you'll hear it. I mean, there's older people, and there's little children walking by, oh, bleep, 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 bleep. Um, and that's why this nation's falling apart. And yet people still don't understand it. They still don't see it as the judgment of God. It's just, you know, the left is doing it. And we have to get rid of the left. We have to get rid of these commies. What about repentance of sin? Oh, well, you know, well, you know none of us are perfect. You know what I mean? Blank, 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 blank. Or no, I'm no saint. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. You know, um... So, it just, I find it so disturbing, you know, that uh, where this nation's going and, you know, I mean, it's prophecy. You know what I mean? It's, it's prophesied in the scriptures. It's going to happen this way. But it's a little bit upsetting to see it. And, um, but that, I just got to thinking about it. The pleasure of sin for a season. You know, and honestly, I'll just say this in my flesh. Uh, I hear the music from when I was growing up. You know, I was, a, I was born in 1975, so I was growing up in the 1980s. And uh, I remember the popular music at the time. Um, and, you know, I hear that in the grocery store now, and it kind of takes me back to that time. And I think, boy, if we could just go back to that time, and, you know, it was, it was better back then. Well... Might have been a little bit better. Yeah, it was better, but I'm saying the uh, the seeds, so to speak, of this wickedness, the sin, uh, they were planted back then. And the Bible says that if you sow to the flesh, you will to the flesh reap corruption. And that's what's happening right now. There's a lot of very fleshly things that were done. And... Um, now it's time to sow, or to reap what was sowed. People put into the ground the seeds of sin and wickedness. Uh, all the things that destroy a nation. I mean, I don't, I don't even care if you're an atheist. You have to understand that there are things that demoralize people. Um, encouraging families to be small. Um, lots of birth control. And, um, you know, a whole lot of... Uh, promiscuous fornication I'll use the Bible term um, that's not good for a nation 
A nation should be strong. Families should be encouraged. Uh, men should be encouraged to get married, to work hard. Don't sell out your factories to China, you know, your enemy, communist nation. Don't, uh, don't just keep making things cheaper and cheaper. Do a good job, work hard, get a wife, have lots of children. But um, there's been a concerted effort on the part of Satan's people, globalists you can call them, to sterilize and, and things. And I've heard some theories that uh, the different, some of the things like the tetanus shot or whatever else can be used to sterilize. I have no idea if that's true or not. Um, but there's other ways to sterilize people. And again, you have to remember that the purpose of the globalists, these people that worship Satan in exchange for money, um, one of their goals is to increase the death rate and lower the birth rate. That's one of their goals. There's an area right over here where I was logging. You can see a lot of the trees are gone from the area. Right over here, getting some firewood. There's still a few logs I didn't get to get out of here yet. Uh, birch tree, it's left there, but... Um, a lot of the beech trees here in northern Maine, they're diseased, and they just, unfortunately, they just rot. I'll see if I can find one here as we're walking, but uh, doing firewood back in here. Still have some uh, wood to cut up, and I can get back down here again. Um, you can kind of see right there how it's kind of real bumpy and doesn't look real good. Beach is usually a very smooth tree. You don't see a lot of, you know, real heavy bark on it or anything. It's just a smooth bark. But uh, getting back to what I was saying here, um, just this <clears throat> this nation. To watch where I'm walking here. This nation, it just is. It's a it's sad, but it's just the way that things are in this life. And um, please don't be fooled by thinking that uh, if we somehow go back to, you know, the way things were in the past or something, you know, 1980s or, you know, 1950s or something like that, you know, all of us, if we could go back to our childhood years, if you could go back, um, you'd still see people planting those seeds of sin uh, none of us can say that well back when I was a child it was it was really good back then no they were planting the seeds um, even you know if you're in your 80s or whatever else you know you can go back to when you were young there were still things being planted back then you, know, you go back to the early days of Hollywood back in the 1920s uh, with the silent films and whatever, uh, they were still planting seeds into the minds of the American people. And um, now it's time to reap. Reap what was sown. So, you say, what's the point of this video? Well, the point of this video is to be a challenge to you as a Christian and to realize everything that you do Every action that you take has a consequence. Um, something will happen as a result of that. And a lot of people have this kooky notion that when you get saved and all your sins are washed away and you just get this live however you want kind of a thing and God's grace is there and whatever. Oh, and you don't get punished for sin and things. Well, eternally you don't get punished for sin, but... Uh, you know, in this life, you will be punished for sin. There's a lot of things, you know, the wages of sin is death. Um, that's written to a Christian. That's not written for lost people. Now, it's true of the lost world, obviously. But uh, the uh, a lot of the things that are written in the New Testament are about sin, condemning sin. It's written to a Christian. But you get these hyper-grace people, and they come along and they say, well, you know... I just, you don't have to worry about sin. Don't concern yourself about sin. You know, it's all paid for. It's all done. It's all over at the cross. Don't, don't beat yourself up because you're wicked. You know, you do things in the Bible that are condemned. Well, the condemnation is only there for, uh, you know, lost people. 
there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Keep reading the verse. Who walk not after the flesh. <laughs> you know, uh, you can't just claim promises from the scriptures and say, you know, if I sin, if I enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, it won't affect me. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. And you will pay for them very dearly in this life. And uh, if you're living a life of sin, you're not really, really going to be working for the Lord or doing things for the Lord. So there is a sense in, in which you will be paid um, for those sins in eternity because you're going to lose rewards at the judgment seat of Christ. And that's a problem. Uh, if you have any brains in your head, I don't think you want to lose rewards at the judgment, judgment seat of Christ. So uh, don't fall for this thing of, um, you know, that you can just go on and sin and, and uh, we shouldn't talk about sin. We shouldn't preach against sin because it's all paid for. Uh, there's lost people that come into the midst of Bible-believing Christians and they start to come out with that stuff that uh, there's just nothing wrong and you can just do whatever you want. Um, that is a, a damnable doctrine right there. Very serious. Um, because a lot of people, they don't, they don't understand sin. They don't take it seriously. And they think, you know, I'll just make this profession of faith and I'm in. No. Um, while sin might be, have a little bit of pleasure to it, uh, it always ends up bad. Always. And a, when you understand that your sin caused the suffering that Jesus had to die on the cross and he was, you know, whipped and everything else, I mean, why would you want to continue doing those things that he had to die for? It, it's always boggled my mind. You know, you take a light attitude towards sin. Don't you realize how much Jesus suffered and, and paid for your sins? Had to die because of what you did? Because of what I've done? Why would you want to continue in that? So, I do hope it's a challenge to you, brethren. Um, I know all have sinned. I get it. I understand. We all struggle with some kind of sin on some level. But the whole point is, you should be refining yourself. You should be purging out leaven out of your life. Getting things out of your life. Get victory over sin. I mean, again, what's the proof? What is the proof that you got saved, that you're born again, if you have no victory over sin? I realize that rhymed, and it was pretty neat, but... Uh, you know, if you don't have victory over sin, did you really get saved? Did God, did the Holy Spirit of God really move into your life? If there's no supernatural victory over sin. You say, well, I've been saved for three years and I'm still struggling with name the sin. Well, why are you struggling? Is there something in your life that's an open doorway to that? You know, I mean, if you struggle with uh, pornography... Uh, maybe you should take some time off of the internet. Did you ever think about that? You know, you open up the door for temptation there. You know, you you uh, struggle with alcohol. Well, maybe stay away from that section of the store where they sell the alcohol. Um, you know, whatever it is. Uh, you know, you're still struggling with uh, smoking cigarettes or something. Well, don't go out with the other employees out on, at break time. Don't do that. So, um, our life down here, brethren, is to serve the Lord, but also to let the Holy Spirit work in our lives to cleanse and purge out sin. That's what it's all about. And um, God will improve your life, but uh, only if you're making a concerted effort to fight sin in your life. Don't think that you're going to have the blessing of God and just continue in sin. You know, that's not going to happen. And if you're saved, there should be conviction of sin. You should feel bad about doing things that are wrong. You say, well, I don't feel bad. I don't, it doesn't bother me. Well, then you're not saved. I can say that. Well, you know, who are you to judge? I get that all the time. Who are you to judge? Uh, well, he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Uh, so, you know, uh, yes, I can judge. And I mean, what kind of an idiot preacher would I be if I didn't have any kind of judgment in my preaching? That's, that's something else I've never understood, you know. You shouldn't be so dogmatic. You shouldn't be 
so uh, judgmental. But as a preacher with a perfect standard of God's word, wouldn't that make me judgmental and ability to have the ability to say what's right and wrong? I would certainly hope so. So uh, just a real quick video here to challenge you. I do hope you think about what I said. That's my son back there behind me. It's not some kind of little whatever people. Someone's stalking you and, and whatever. I'm not being stalked. It's this one right here. So that is going to be it. We'll see you in the next video.